Essentially a one-man band, Tame Impala was founded in 2007 by Kevin Parker, an Australian musician who has been described as a musical genius given his ability to bring his music from the brainstorming period all the way to the final production phase all by himself. With a career spanning over a decade, Tame Impala consistently gives us psychedelic hits that prove why they are one of today's most original and popular acts in the indie scene, mixing 60s psychedelia, R&B, synth pop, and countless other genres. Tame Impala has truly created an incomparable and refreshing sound. Today, we're going to give you 10 interesting facts about the beloved Tame Impala. Kevin Parker writes, records, performs, and produces all of his own music, aka does all the steps of the musical process solo. While on tour, Tame Impala consists of other musicians to actually perform the music. Behind the scenes, it's really just Parker. Essentially, Tame Impala is Parker's solo recording project. But when he first signed to a label, Parker didn't want to reveal that it was just him. He explains his thought process, saying, in fact, the record label when they signed us didn't even know that it was me that was playing the drums and guitar and bass and multi-tracking. I outright lied to them when we met up. The contract that we signed was for three of us. I didn't want to say it was just me for a number of reasons. Number one, I was kind of shy. Looking back, it's like, why the didn't you just own it? Another thing is the music scene I was in was a very communal scene. We lived to jam and lived to play gigs. For the things that finally came out of that scene to just be a solo project felt kind of wrong. Kevin Parker was heavily inspired by music of the 60s and 70s, technically classified as part of the psychedelic rock or pop genre. It's no surprise that Parker was influenced by this peak era of psychedelia. When asked about his musical inspiration, Parker said the following, I got into bands like Cream and Jefferson Airplane in a big way and loved the sounds of their recordings. My friends were listening to bands like Brain Ticket and Demon Fuzz who opened my eyes to different ways of constructing songs. The Beatles' way of singing vocal lines often crept into the recordings because they are so unique, whereas the elements we take from those other bands are usually common among a few other bands we listen to. The rock influence is definitely audible to listeners of Tame Impala, as many cite the similarities to the psychedelic sounds of the 60s and 70s. Parker's success in the genre has also left many comparing him to his musical heroes, some even calling him the new Jim Morrison because of his alt-rock persona. Parker's combination of old-school psychedelia and modern sounds has truly made him one of today's most original and exciting acts. Kevin Parker's dad discouraged his son from pursuing a career in music. Parker says, My dad always warned me not to choose music as a career. He got quite worried and said, If you do music as your job, as the thing that puts food on the table, then it will instantly ruin its magic. It won't be mysterious and fun anymore. It would just be like work. Parker subsequently attended university, where he studied astronomy. His artwork for the cover of his second EP, titled Tame Impala EP, was actually inspired by images he saw during an astronomy lecture. However, Parker hated university. He says, I was at uni, and a couple of months before we got signed, I had submitted to the reality that I wasn't actually going to be a famous musician, and I should just get on with my career. So that was when I started to knuckle down and actually do stuff at uni. But at the same time, I could never passionately give my attention to anything other than music. Like it was a disease. I would not be able to listen to a word in lectures because I'd be thinking of my new song. On his way to his last astronomy exam, Modular Recordings contacted Parker about signing him, and he turned his car around to start making music. Although Tame Impala is what he is most known for, Kevin Parker has been a part of many other musical projects. As part of the Perth music scene, Parker is constantly involved in musical endeavors with fellow Australian performers. Starting in 2005, Parker and a handful of other musicians formed Mink Muscle Creek. The band became a popular act in Perth with Parker on guitar and later drums. In 2005, Parker created a band called the DD Dumbs, which would share Tame Impala's future touring musician Dominic Simper, who plays bass at live performances. Parker renamed the band Tame Impala in 2007. Parker also joined the band Pond in 2009 as a drummer and even produced some of the band's music. A jack of all trades, Parker says the following about the Perth music scene and being a part of so many projects. It's a really close-knit scene, quiet, separated from the rest of Australia. 
Tame Impala is just one sliver of the giant amount of noise making that we do as a circle of friends. I don't feel bad doing the recording by myself because I don't expect that input in their bands. To us, Tame Impala is just Kevin Parker's project and everyone has a project. Kevin Parker has worked with some of the biggest artists in the music industry. Travis Scott, Kanye West, Lady Gaga, and Mark Ronson are just a few of the people he has collaborated with in recent years. Although all of these artists are very different from Tame Impala's sound, Parker was able to bring in psychedelic influences into the studio to add his personal flair to the music. This is evident with Parker's work on Travis Scott's Skeletons, a song from his incredibly successful album titled Astro World. For Lady Gaga's 2016 album, Joanne, Parker helped produce songs including Perfect Illusion. He says the following about working with Gaga. It was amazing, really, really good. One of those life career defining times. It started out sort of like a career move, like I'll get in on that, but it quickly became something so personal and so meaningful for everyone involved. I'm just happy it's all out in the open now. Now I cannot tell secrets anymore. Gaga also speaks highly of Parker, deeming him a musical genius. Parker's work with such a diverse array of musicians is a perfect testament to his creativity and ingenuity. Tame Impala's 2010 album, Inner Speaker, and their 2012 album, Lonerism, created a storyline that wasn't initially intentional. From Parker's perspective, Lonerism can be viewed as almost a prequel to Inner Speaker due to the lyricism. Parker says, Lonerism is quite a childish album, almost like a persona who turns into the one from Inner Speaker. That's kind of what I hear anyway. For me, it's like the last album was singing about someone who's already blissfully in oblivion, so I was already there. Whereas this album is like the child version of that, someone growing up and discovering other people and just realizing their place is not involved with the rest of the world kind of thing. Like discovering that you're a loner. Although Parker did not necessarily set out to make Lonerism a lyrical prequel to Inner Speaker, this poetic sequence of a shy child becoming a blissful adult is definitely audible when you listen to the lyrics from both albums. Parker has explained that the childlike persona on Lonerism emerged from his experience of touring Inner Speaker, in which he had to go against his grain and be an extroverted people person, therefore establishing another connection between the two albums. Lonerism was recorded all around the world. Unlike Inner Speaker, which Parker recorded in a scheduled and structured manner, Lonerism was pieced together across Parker's travels. Parker speaks on the international recording experience, saying, I've got a recording thing with me at the moment. I can do vocal takes and guitar takes wherever I am, so it's getting recorded all over the world. There's a guitar take in Vienna, or a vocal take in the aeroplane from Singapore to London, and I've got my studio at home, so a lot is being done in Perth. This different environment allowed Parker to take inspiration from sounds and sights that he wouldn't otherwise encounter in a recording studio. However, in late 2010, Parker actually lost the iPod that had half of the album's demos on it on his way from Amsterdam to London. Parker says he was scared that the tracks would be leaked or even released under a different band. But luckily, the iPod was found and returned to Parker. Here we can see the pros and cons of recording on the road. Kevin Parker is fascinated by pop music, and Lonerism was almost a pop album. As a part of the indie and psychedelic music scene, Tame Impala's music is rarely categorized in the pop genre. However, for Lonerism, Parker wanted a change of pace from his usual productions. He has even said he wanted Tame Impala to sound like Britney Spears and indulge in the world of cheesy pop. It's hard to imagine Tame Impala with this type of sound, but we might have gotten the chance if the pop elements of Lonerism hadn't been cut out. Parker speaks on the decision to remove the over-the-top pop antics from the album, saying, Thankfully, those bits were culled from the final project. The big thing that was difficult to put a lid on was the excessiveness of really cheesy pop things. For whatever reason, I started to become obsessed with pop melodies and pop chord progressions. I fell in love with the disposableness of it. Maybe it was because we had suddenly become involved in this indie scene, and a part of my personality was trying to reject whatever environment I was in. We were in love with the idea that people would hate it. We just let ourselves go, doing these six-minute prog pop pieces. Tame Impala was accused of plagiarizing a drum sample from a band called The Skull Snap Song, It's a New Day, on their song, Eventually. The founder of the 70s funk band, Sam Cully, called Tame Impala out, saying, Mr. Parker, my name is Sam Cully from Skull Snaps. 
On your song, eventually, you are using our drum sample from It's a New Day. You have not cleared the sample with us. Our musicologist says it is indeed our sample. If we don't hear from you in three days, we will file necessary in court against you and the record company. On August 20th, 2015, the Tame Impala Instagram responded to the claim by reposting the written accusation with the following caption. Wow, unexpected compliment. Creator of the famous Skull Snaps drum sample thinks my drums is his actual sample and wants to sue me for not clearing it. Ha ha. Sam Cully, you have three days to fire your musicologist. Anyone think this could be a hoax though? Parker's response to the situation was rather comical, given that we have seen many copyright lawsuits in the music industry and none are usually handled with a witty Instagram comeback. Despite the accusation, a lawsuit was never officially filed. When Coachella dropped the 2019 festival's lineup, Kevin Parker hadn't yet informed his touring mates that they were headlining on day two. After the drop, Parker texted to let them know it was in fact true. This oversight was just the start of the chaos that occurred for the preparation of Tame Impala's set. Drawing his inspiration from films like Star Wars and 2001 A Space Odyssey, Parker wanted to create an intergalactic meets psychedelic stage design that would make the audience feel as though they were traveling through space. Confetti cannons, laser lights, and an illuminated 12,000 pound ring that mimicked a UFO all accumulated in a viewing experience that had been described by Coachella guests as one of the best concerts they have ever attended. Due to the grandeur of the design, Tame Impala made no money from Coachella, the biggest music festival in the world. Parker explains his vision for the expensive set, saying, I wanted to do sections of just mind fuckery, where we would not actually play anything. I call them cosmic intermissions. This mission is very fitting to Tame Impala's overall vibe and aesthetic, constantly pushing barriers and bringing something new to the table. Well, that's all for today, everyone. We hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.